Hello friends, good morning. I am today again present here to discuss with you another important topic of nuclear reaction. As I promise you, I will discuss about the compound nuclear story of nuclear reaction. How the nuclear reaction proceeds? What is the mechanism? So now we will talk about the reaction mechanism. The first mechanism or first theory uh, how the reaction takes place is compound nuclear theory. So compound nuclear theory has two postulates or two assumptions. Number one I will discuss first. Number one is formation of formation of compound nucleus. So I will talk first about this. What the meaning of formation of compound nucleus? Well, I will give example of general reaction. I write a nuclear reaction which is given by say uh, a projectile X plus a target. X is the projectile. the target nucleus. We get here after the reaction, the first theory proposed by Bohr's. So this is the Bohr's compound nucleus theory, you can say. Bohr's compound nuclear theory of nuclear reaction by the projectile X interacts with the target nucleus. It goes inside the target nucleus. It is captured by the target nucleus and captured and X plus X, we get another system, C, star. The C star is X plus X, is called compound nucleus. In the excited state, So the formation of a new system X plus X as C star and this now decays, this may decay to various possible ways. We don't know. There may be, I explained on the first day, there may be disintegration, there may be capture, uh, that is uh, only gamma ray ready to capture, no particle emission. So different types of decays are possible. We will talk about decay later on. First I am talking about the first postulate of the Bohr's compound nucleus is formation of compound nucleus. So I will elaborate this more. Whenever a target nucleus captures a projectile, there is formation of new system. This new system means X plus X. When projectile enters the target, what happens? It has got kinetic energy. It has got linear momentum. So it is strikes with the within the it is strikes with the nucleons present in the nuclear. There are large number of nucleons depending upon the A atomic weight of the nucleus. So there is interaction between the incoming projectile. Say for example it is a neutron. So neutron is going to interact with say here this enter neutron and we have large number of nucleons sitting here. So this interact with the nucleon and this diverted to the side, nucleon also diverted to the side with gas energy. Then it goes to this side, and nucleon goes this side, and this goes to this side, and then it comes to here. Then it comes to here. 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 It comes to here, and so on. And each nucleon also is striking, going. So this nucleon also going, coming like this. 
So they, that comes here, this comes here. So there are a la large number of collisions takes place inside the nucleus, depending upon the energy of the projectile. So what happens? The projectile inside, as it is a part of, it is, if it is a nucleon, it moves inside a large number of collisions, about say 10 to power 7 collisions. Large number of collisions take place. So large means as if you have many, say, small, small uh, stones and another stone you put and then you mix it all together. So the incoming projectile, the neutron is a part of the nucleus, it is also, now it becomes a part of the nucleus and it forgets how I came in because the time taken in this so many collisions is so much large on the nuclear scale that, that this projectile goes inside and this becomes X plus X that is C. This C forgets the history of formation. What does it mean? History of formation means the C doesn't know how it was formed, how it was evolved. Because so many collisions on the nuclear time scale. Well, let me say what the nuclear time scale is. The nuclear time scale means a time taken by say 5 to 10 energy projectile, 5 to 10 energy proton or neutron to cross the nucleus. So what, how you will get the, uh, how you will get the uh, nuclear time scale? Well, nuclear time scale is the time taken by a projectile to cross the nucleus. A nucleus dimension how much? some Fermi. So nuclear time you will get the nuclear time. How you will get? Nuclear time means time taken by a nucleon a projectile and projectile say neutron or proton time taking my in projectile N or B in crossing uh, of energy say E around say 5 to 10 MeV in crossing a nucleus. So what the nuclear side? Ten Fermi. So that is time is equal to ten to power minus fourteen. Ten to power minus fourteen meter divided by the velocity of you calculate the velocity of this energy neutron or proton from the mass half mv squared just find out the velocity. So velocity is of the order of velocity is of the order of 10 to the power 7 meters per second. So divide by 10 to the power 7. This time becomes P is equal to 10 to the power minus 21 seconds. So nuclear time square means the time taken by a nucleon of 5 to 10 MeV energy to cross a nuclear of radius about 10 per minute is about 10 to power minus 21 seconds. So on this time scale, the formation of compound nucleus takes very large time. How much time you can calculate? Say, we know the time from the mean collision, mean free path. 
the main rebirth of Sanjay particle projectile, main rebirth of the order of say, uh, what do you say? Uh, main rebirth, how much? Around, around, let's say, 2 into. Main rebirth means distance between one, mean distance between one region. 2 into, say, 10 to power uh, minus 15 meter. Mean rebirth for this projectile of this velocity. You can calculate means collision, mean collision distance in one collision. What does mean average distance? So this distance and we take a uh, we take a between a collision time. This is the this is the mean rebirth and divide by the say around uh, so time between one collision is around uh, say 10 to power minus 15 and say uh, 2 into 10 to power minus 15 and what do you say? 10 to power 7. So around, this is around, oh sorry, 15. So around 10 to the power minus 22. So that is time between one collision is about 10 to the power minus 22. So what happens? Number of collisions Number of collisions you can get from the uh, from the or that is the number of collisions you have got. So you have got time to be many collisions. So what the uh, life life of the life of the compound nucleus. Life of the compound nucleus you get say 10 to power 7 into 10 to power minus 22. That is time in one collision. And this 10 to power 7 is the collision. 10 to power 7 collision. For this energy. So this becomes about 10 to the power minus 15 seconds. So my meaning is that nuclear time is 10 to the power minus 21 seconds. That is the projectile passes the nucleus in this second. And the lifetime of compound nucleus is around 10 to the power minus 15 to 10 to the power minus 16 seconds. So on this time scale, 10 to the power minus 21, this time is much larger, about 10 to the power 6 times larger. So, lifetime of compound nucleus means compound nucleus is formed, how much time is remains there? About 10 to the power minus 15 or 10 to the power minus 16 seconds. So, during this time, so many collisions are taking place, about 10 to the power 7 collisions are taking place. So, that in so many collisions, the projectile mixes with the nucleus present inside the system and it becomes part of the system. You cannot distinguish between the projectile if it is the nucleus and the nucleus sitting inside the nucleus. Because projectile is also a nucleus. So it mixes with that. You cannot distinguish. And the collisions continues go on, goes on, goes on, goes on till so much lifetime, so much time, in this time, compound nuclear so formed forgets the history of formation. It doesn't remember how I was evolved, how I am produced. It means that you can produce the same compound nucleus by different mechanisms. I give you an example. The collision number is so large 
and a lifetime of compounding tears, all the nuclear time is really so large, then the war minus 15 seconds, and nuclear time is really then the war minus 21 seconds, so large that I give an example now, that I, I want to produce, I want to produce a compound nuclear say aluminium 27 star because it is extra tasty. How I can do this? I can produce this aluminum 227 by one mechanism that this I want to excite this. So I have aluminum 27 I give gamma rays and some energy of energy with gamma rays and aluminum 27 it is possible that gamma ray gives it energy and it is excited. So this is one channel that gamma ray can produce aluminum 27 compound nuclear in the excited state. What else? I take a target of say, say aluminum 26 and I take a neutron. A neutron of zero charge, one unit mass. I bombard a neutron of some suitable kind of energy so that this becomes excited to the aluminum producer's target. What I get? Aluminum producer, because neutron added here, it becomes mass increased by one unit charge remains same. Charge is 13. So this becomes neutron captured by aluminum 26. It becomes aluminum 27 star. Okay, I can do another thing that I take proton. Proton, what is proton? 1H1. And I take a nucleus of charge 12. 12 is magnesium. And I take magnesium 26. So magnesium 26, when proton is bombarded on this, it becomes 13 charge and 27 mass. So it becomes aluminum 27, this channel. I take another particle, projectile, say, I take, say, uh, alpha particle. What is alpha particle? Alpha particle is twice helium 4. Of course, this is also ionized. This is also ionized, doubly ionized. So this alpha particle, I use, and what target I take? I take target, so the four mass goes there. And two charge goes there, so it becomes 13. So I take 11 sodium, 23. I get 2, 11 plus 2, 13 and 27. So I get same compound nucleus by this channel. So these channels means these are reaction channels different projectiles on different target, small x capital X, small x capital X. I am getting this C star and this is a, this is a, this is a, I can take another channel, say, suppose I take what, what can I take? I take neutron, so neutron means one, one, uh, neutron I write by symbol say, G, neutron I take, which is one H2. The so neutron is two mass, one proton, one neutron. So two mass means I have to take 25 and one charge here also. So I have to take charge less by one. So 12 magnesium 25, I take target of 12 magnesium 25. What I get? 12 plus 1, 13 and n 27. So by this channel I get same aluminum 27 star. So this aluminum populated by aluminum isotope, this is the compound nucleus. Compound nucleus means 
project has press target project has press target so this becomes a bomb stock so board game theory is what first goes to it but that when if any project that interests in the target to clear there is a formation of a compound system a new system is formed which is in excited state then we will talk about the digging later on at this time i am talking about the formation only so this can be formed by some other than also selecting by the trito some other part selecting the lithium other particles also and different different combination of different projectile and target nucleus i can get same compound nucleus. so this compound nucleus lifetime is about 10 to the power minus 50 seconds during this time there is a collision between different nucleons and incoming particle and energy share taking place energy of the incoming projectile taken by in one collision another nucleon and it moves a remaining incumbent also moves with certain energy there is small small energy law per collision and then it strikes with some other nucleon and so on this goes on large number of collisions about 10 to power 7 collision takes place so that energy becomes means equal to the rest of the system by nearly binding the energy of the nucleus about 8 mb so then no more collision and this in this time this system doesn't remember whether this was formed by this channel by this channel by this channel or by this channel this forgets because so much time has doesn't remember that who was the projectile who which was the target to get so that was the thought of the board that first postulate of compound nucleus theory that whenever a projectile enters the target nucleus large number of collision takes place and the nuclear time is scale with then it can go on for 21 seconds the life time of compound nucleus about 10 to power minus 15 to 10 to power minus 15 seconds or 10 to power minus 70 depends upon the velocity of the time also so how we already share the large number of collisions so like the amount of large on the nuclear time scale and hence the formation of compound nucleus forgets the history of history of formation of compound so okay then what was next this is the formation of compound nucleus next was next second postulate of bohr for the compound nucleus sorry reaction the reaction mechanism the reaction takes place by the formation of compound nucleus so what was the second idea of bohr independent decay of independent decay of the compound nucleus what the meaning of this or how to explain this independent decay of the compound nucleus how we explain it the decay because compound nucleus is in excited state it has got energy so it cannot live in the with energy it has to go in the ground state rest state so it releases energy what how it releases energy it releases energy by emission of some radiation some particle gamma ray or some particle So the decay of C star is independent of the formation. Whether this aluminium twenty-seven, which I just populated, is formed by this channel, 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 means by alpha particle, by proton, by gamma, by neutron. Or by neutron, which projectile? This has no memory. 
but the decay of this the system decay of it to this channel 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 this decay of compound nuclear is independent of this it is formed by this channel it can decay by this channel this is a channel where emission of proton takes place emission of neutron takes place emission of alpha particle emission of neutron emission of gamma ray like this 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 so the the channels it is formed by this channel it may decay by this channel means emission of proton it is formed by proton it may decay by emission of alpha particle so decay of this compound nucleus doesn't depend upon the mode of formation what was the mode of formation means whether this was formed by this channel Or this channel, or this channel, or this channel, it can decay. So, compound independent, compound independent decay of the compound. Independent means it doesn't depend. It does not depend. Upon the channel, it was formed. means the formation of compound nucleus and decay of the compound nucleus will have no correlation it is formed by the channel it may decay by the channel so it doesn't depend upon the channel the channel in part form mode of formation decay is doesn't depend upon mode of formation what was the mode of formation this formation and this decay these two are independent process this was the assumption of bohr for his compound nucleus sorry that the reaction takes place by formation of compound nucleus and the compound nucleus form decays the decay of compound nucleus is independent of the mode of formation the formation of compound nucleus and decay both are independent they have no correlation so this was the idea given by the bohr and these two are the postulates for compound nuclear theory i will further elaborate this idea Or the limitations. What are the limitations or validity of this? I will talk about the limitations or validity.
So why is it happening? Suppose I have this, this is the one Purina Nesta, this is so much Purina, this is so much, this is so much, and there is some average Purina Nesta. And I take the nucleus of very small size, suppose. Here, particle comes, and in one collision, it goes out. Or maybe another collision, it goes out after two collisions. So if the nuclear size is very small, what do what you think? And the projectile coming, its mean collision distance is large, so that it goes out within one or two collisions. What you can say? Condition. At this energy around uh, 10 to the power, uh, around 10 or 5 mv projectile, the I say lambda, which is I call the mean free path. What is the mean free path? Mean free path means mean distance of the collision means one particle is free, not colliding. That means distance between one collision and the other second particle collides with one. So this distance here, this distance here, this distance so much, this distance like that. You add all the collision distance and then take the mean. So mean free path, there is some expression depending upon the energy, but for this energy, uh, of 5 to 10 mv, the mean free path for the 5 mv proton or neutron is around uh, say uh, 10 to power minus 17 meter or, or so. Mean free path of this energy. As the energy is low Slow moving particle will have a small distance because you collide immediately near and project never you know. Fast moving particle it will go fast without any collision. So as the energy increases, this will change. But for the low energy, this 5 to 10 MV, the mean free path is of this order, or maybe 10 to power minus 16, you can say. Depends upon the velocity. So, 10 to power minus 18, it depends upon what the velocity is. At the high velocity, the mean free path is very large. Means maybe 10 to power 16, minus 16 or minus 15. And low velocity, it is low, means 10 to power minus 17, etc. So, I put a condition that if lambda, the mean free path, is much smaller, then nuclear radius R. What does it mean? Nucleus is of large size and mean free path is small. So large nucleus and we have projectile is tagging the distance between one and two collision like this small, small like this. So this will go on colliding inside and it will never come out. If the mean free path is large, it may come out in one or two collisions. So if this condition is open, the mean free path, the mean distance of collision is much smaller than nuclear radius. Then I think the condition of the compound nucleus forgets the history of formation may be valid. Because in so many collisions, Compound nucleus will not remember how it was formed. So that to have the to see the validity of compound nucleus theory, compound nucleus theory may be valid or limitations are that this lambda lambda must be much smaller than R nuclear radius. This is the one condition, one limitation that this is lambda is mean free path, must much smaller than nuclear radius. Then we can have maybe the compound nucleus is formed. If this is large 
the projectile can go outside the then barrel to prison and no compound will be formed. So one condition which looks to be correct that this should be. So this I told you depends upon the energy. So it means this will be much smaller when the energy is low, 10 to the power 70. It goes on increasing when energy increases. So lambda is much smaller than R. So this is this is true. This is true. We will, we will see later on at low energies. Lambda is much smaller than R. But as lambda increases, means at, at an as energy increases of projectile. Increases the collision mean path, mean free path. Increases and the above condition may be. Partially true. At high energy, this condition at high energy, lambda is smaller than R, may not be valid. This is this may not be valid. So at high energy. Maybe we have to see at high energy there may be no compound nucleus formation. Maybe at low energies we get this condition fulfilled and we get the Bohr's first idea that compound nucleus is formed because the collision number is large and the lifetime of compound nucleus is large because the mean free part is small. As the high energy means, high energy particle is not colliding with the nucleus present there or colliding with one or two and going out. I give just a simple example of from the, our daily life. Suppose a high leader like Prime Minister or Chief Minister is coming and public is there on the line, roadside, and the Chief Minister or Prime Minister or any leader is moving slow, just namaste, namaste, namaste. Time of collision will be, okay. it is moving slow. So mean free path is, you can say, is small. Means it is saying hello to this person, hello to this person, hello to this person, and having more and more interaction. If he is moving fast, he will meet with one person here, one person there, one person there, and will go fast. So a collision distance of the leader with the public will be small if the velocity is small. Collision distance will be large. From here to here, it is not interacting with anybody. Just hello and going out. Then hello. And it can have hello and shake and with so many persons if its velocity is small. Like that, the particle moving with slow velocity will have large number of interactions collision and particle moving with the high velocity will suggest hello to one or two and will go out. So that is the validity of first persuasion formation of compound nucleus as given by Bohr is or limit is till this lambda is very much smaller than R. Compound nucleus size may be valid and if this lambda increases means energy increases so maybe at some energy, when lambda becomes appreciable nearly to R or slightly less than R, you can say not this condition for well, a compound nucleus may not be valid. There may be some other nuclear reaction mechanism, 
But at the low energy, when this condition is fulfilled, the only mechanism of compound nucleus theory is valid. That is the idea of both. So we will see later on also that compound nucleus theory of Bohr has one limitation or validity under this condition that lambda must be very much smaller than R. Now what else? Why there is a decay of compound nucleus? Why compound nucleus decay takes place? And they say compound nucleus decay independent. Why compound nucleus decay? Compound nucleus decay under a question mark. Why? Is the case. Why? Because it is excited. It has to release, it has to release energy. Okay. So means when there are large number of collisions, energy is being shared by different nucleons. Suppose in collision there are so many nucleons and this projectile, this nucleon came inside, collided here, then collided here, then collided here, and this nucleon also moved this side, collided here, this collided here, and this collided also here, and this also collided here, and this collided here. Similarly, this went there. And this came here, and this also collided here. So many, it means many nucleons in turn are colliding, say, or by same nucleus. Means they are transferring energy to this. This is transferring energy to this. This is transferring energy to this. This is transferring energy to this. So whenever there is concentration of energy on one particular nucleon, this nucleon gets the concentration of the concentration of energy upon a particular So that its energy, its excitation energy so that its excitation energy becomes more than the binding energy of that nucleon. Means this particular nucleon upon which so many other nucleons are striking and they are giving high energy. Mean its energy is increasing, or others also give him, say, there is a concentration of energy on one particular nucleon, so that energy becomes more than the binding energy of the, that nucleon. The nucleon is emitted and compound nuclear. Decay. 
liquid. Whenever there is concentration, concentration of energy on one particular nucleus, all different nucleons are sharing energy with that. Its excitation becomes more than the binding energy and it is emitted. You know, all the nucleons are bound. See, average binding energy per nucleus around 8 MeV or 7 to 8 MeV, 7.5, depends upon the size of the nucleus. So, 7 to 8 MeV. Average or up to 8 is up to 8 per time. So, we take average 8 MeV. So when the energy of excitation of this nucleus becomes more than the, the binding energy or separation energy also of nucleus, it is decaying. So what mathematical conditions we can put on this? What mathematical conditions I can put on this? Decay of compound nucleus. The decay of compound nucleus how we can say what the condition we can put? Mathematical. Say epsilon is the kinetic energy of of incoming projectile. And say EB is the binding energy. That projectile is also a nuclear. EB is the binding energy. Of this is also nuclear. So binding energy of nuclear. The excitation energy of compound nucleus EC is equal to epsilon plus EB when the, this becomes bound, it gives the mass system becomes bound, the mass decreases. So means it gives the energy to system. It is bound now by, by this energy. If you want to separate this again, you have to provide this energy to make it free again. So when this becomes bound, part of the system, the excitation becomes this much. So excitation of this is a total excitation of compound nuclear. Well, I divide this by so excitation energy per nucleon. I divide this by number of nucleon, say it is A, where A is the atomic weight of the target system, by A atomic weight. So epsilon plus EB upon A is the energy per nucleon inside the nucleus. And if this energy becomes large, large, how much large? Or if this energy is less than what? If this energy is small, system will not decay. If this becomes large, system will decay. So, what are the condition, what are the mathematical condition on the compound nucleus formation and then it remains there, it is not decaying, it is formed. If it decays, immediately it is not formed. So, what are the condition, mathematical condition, so that compound nucleus has got some lifetime, that this energy must be much smaller than what we have. So if I write SA, that is SA is separation energy of 
of particle A. from compound nucleus. I mean this much energy is required to remove that nuclear A from the compound nucleus, this energy. So if from this, if this is much less than this, well the nuclear will remain bound, it will not go. And I told, I tell you that as a for nucleon, is equal to nearly same thing with EB. SA and EB are same thing. Binding energy or separate. By what energy it is bound? You want to separate, you want to remove it, you have to provide the same energy. So SA and EB are same. So this condition is fulfilled. Okay. What this condition means? Epsilon is much smaller than SA and EB are same. So I write a as A minus EB and EB and S A are nearly the same, same thing. So I take this as same as A equal to EB. So I take epsilon. Epsilon is equal to epsilon is much smaller than a minus 1 and I take S A also or E B if I anything to write. E B. This S A this E B say. So I write like this. So what the meaning of this is? Epsilon is much smaller than A minus 1 into E B. A minus 1 nearly A. I take some example, say, suppose A, A, suppose A is equal to, say, 5, E, B is equal to A times E, B. So this becomes 5 minus 1, you take 4, or 4 into 8, this becomes 32. Epsilon is, say, kinetic energy of the time. Suppose E epsilon is say 10 MeV. For this case, A is equal to 5, epsilon 10 MeV is not much smaller than this. It is smaller, but not much smaller. So if this thing should be large, means I should have A large, means I have say A equal to say 21. Then A minus 1 means 20, 20 into 8 becomes, then this becomes for A 21, 20 into 8, 160. For this nucleus, A is equal to 21. This 10 MeV is, is smaller, much than 160. If I take, so for this A 21, A 21, it is possible that epsilon is smaller than A minus 1 into E B. But for say A is equal to say 71, suppose A minus 1, 70, then this product 70 into A, 560. So for a is equal to 71, this epsilon 10 MeV, so this is epsilon is 10 MeV and A minus 1 into EV is 560. So this now you can say epsilon that is equal to 10 is much smaller than 560. So this condition is fulfilled for heavy elements, for A large value of A, for low value of A, 5, 10, 20, etc., this is maybe smaller, but not much smaller. And hence, one condition I can put is that for validity of compound nucleus value, A 
A should be a heavy nucleus a large means heavy weight nuclei not medium not light nuclei so it means what does it mean compound nucleus theory or compound nucleus the reaction mechanism should be valid in heavy nuclei and what else so this one condition we can put that compound nucleus theory reaction mechanism should be valid in heavy nuclei okay from the same condition from the same condition okay, i have say epsilon is very much smaller than a minus 1 into tv if epsilon is say 50 or 100 mv what will happen and a is say 21 say so that a minus 1 is 20 into 8 So a minus one into e v is twenty into eight, one sixty, and this is a hundred mv. So high energy, fifty mv. This condition is not at all valid for the even twenty or light. This is not very light. Or or I take the a is equal to the even fifty one. Then 51 minus 150, so 15 into 8 equal to 400. Even 100 mV energy of this, this is 400. So this is small, but not much, much smaller. So this condition is not fulfilled when the energy of projectile increases means 50 mV, 100 mV, etc., etc. But heavy nuclear it may be valid. Means heavy nuclei is I say A is equal to say something something like uh, say two hundred twenty one or some number two hundred one easy to multiply I take two hundred one then this will be two hundred into two hundred into eight one thousand six hundred so for A is equal to two hundred one. This 150 mV or 100 mV can be taken much smaller. 50 is much smaller than 1600. It means if energy of the gas increases from E or medium to the high, this may not be true. This may be true only in the very heavy nuclei like 200. This is large. So what condition I can put is second condition. What what I can say. About the compound nucleus formation, but that is the compound nucleus theory. Compound nuclear mechanism is valid. What condition for? Low energy of the maybe up to thirty to fifty mV. This for medium weight. This will be high. Heavy nuclei, medium nuclei, and 
मीडियम और है भी यू से डिपेंड कंडीशन से मीडियम न्यूज में आई और हैवी न्यूज में आई मीन्स एज दी एनर्जी इंक्रीज है कंपाउंड न्यूक्लियर सोलर इज नॉट एट ऑल वैलिड इन द लाइट न्यूक्लियर नॉट एट ऑल वैलिड इट मे बी वैलिड इन सम मीडियम न्यूक्लियर फॉर द लो एनर्जी लाइक टेन टू थर्टी एम एम बी इट मे बी वैलिड इन सम हैवी न्यूक्लियाई लाइक से लैड और से मटकरी प्लेटनम टंगस्टन एक्सेट्रा इवन फॉर फिफ्टी एम एम बी so the condition is that compound nucleus mechanism is very for low energy of projectile may be up to 30 to 50 mv beyond that maybe some other mechanism start we will talk it over but at this time we are talking about the compound nucleus only so compound we have now these two conditions that compound nucleus theory is valid for heavy nuclei compound nucleus theory is valid for Low energy projectile. So these are the condition in our. Let us keep this in our mind. The compound nuclear theory, as proposed by Bohr, may be valid under two conditions: that lambda is much smaller than nuclear radius r, and epsilon is much smaller than a minus one into e b, which gives us that these conditions are true for. True for low energy projectile and heavy nuclear. For medium nuclear, it may be very low energy. Now, say we talk something about say decay. Compound nucleus decay means uh, that is the cross section probability, the action cross section, the cross section probability sigma, the action cross section. We can combine two probabilities. One is the action cross section sigma is now formation of. Probability of decay. Probability, I will just write. Probability here also. Probability. Probability of decay. So the cross section, reaction cross section, is now made of two probabilities. Formation probability. How much formation probability? And what the decay probability? What the decay? You see, by how we represent the decay of uh, any system, any excited state. I have talked earlier when we talked the Mosfar effect at that time also. I have shown that the excited state decaying by emission of some. So it depends. Formation and decay depends on the width, width of the. The decay of any excited state. The effect. Large the formation of the state will be large. If it is large, the decay probability will be also large. So decay probability, how we can write? And formation probability, I can write sigma as sigma c alpha means this is the this is the formation probability of 
compound nuclear C of excitation energy EC by channel alpha means alpha is the channel in which channel the incoming projectile is coming by what channel so this represents just a channel or you can add abc so this c is the compound nuclear material remember that the bohr's independent decay of compound nucleus also says that compound nucleus so formed which forgot the history of formation it depends upon the energy decay depends upon the energy of the site and not any other factor because it has forgot the history of formation how the form which was the projectile which was the target nucleus so decay of compound nucleus is independent of formation means its decay is independent of any other thing particle or whatever it depends only on the energy of excitation compound nucleus decay depends upon ec only energy of excitation and nothing else and ec depends of course on the energy kinetic energy of the project so that because that decides the mean free power also so it depends upon the energy of the project and not the type of the project whether it is proton or it is neutron or alpha particle or neutron it depends upon the epsilon ec is epsilon plus eb eb is constant k time eb is epsilon depends upon it so compound nucleus decay is independent of formation and decay only depends upon ec only so that the formation of compound nucleus by channel alpha c and decay probability i write by letter gc beta beta i the channel decay channel means compound nucleus form the decay Alpha formed by his channel. This is the alpha channel. Means where I have proton plus uh, what is called or neutron. Neutron plus I give example of aluminium. So aluminium twenty six. This is the channel alpha channel, and it is formed aluminium twenty seven. The decay of this depends only on the E C. Whether it will decay by emission of proton, neutron, and so on. Decay. How much energy is there? Means how much energy available for decay, so that converts into mass. Because this will emit a particle. So particle means it has to convert into mass, and it has, it has to give to kinetic energy also. So the decay is this channel is called beta channel. Whether it is decaying by emission of neutron or proton or neutron. So these channels are written by beta. The incoming channels are written by alpha. So alpha is incoming channel, and beta is outgoing channel. Means whether this particle emitted, this particle. I am calling this as any by beta. Beta. Beta can be proton, neutron, or any particle. Alpha can be any particle. This is incoming. So the compound nucleus is formed by alpha channel and decays by emission of a beta channel particle. So this is the sigma is equal to sigma c alpha g c beta. Now what is g c beta? Decay probability g c beta. G C beta, the decay probability. How we write? 
I told you that decay depends upon the width of the state. So what the width of the decaying state? That is means the energy width. I write gamma beta over gamma. What is gamma beta over gamma? Gamma beta is width of decaying state. For a particle emission, beta. Remember, this beta has no relation with the beta particle. This is general particle coming out that the proton, neutron, neutron, alpha particle, gamma ray, etc. So this has no correlation with the beta decay. Forget. This is simply symbol beta. So gamma beta is the width of the state. And gamma is total width of the state. Total width means particle width plus radiation width. If this is total gamma means summation over gamma beta. I can include this also inside this gamma beta. Uh, sorry, this includes all particles. Including gamma. means this also I have included. So beta can be A, B, C, D, like that, any particle, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, so on. So some radiation width for decay, decay depends upon the width. So width for the decay by our excitation by emission of neutron, by emission of proton, by emission of alpha, etc. So this summation means all particles emission. Total gamma means summation of this. And gamma beta means only one particular channel. So this is the, the probability, because it is the total width, it is the partial width. So partial width by total width is the probability of decay. So this is gamma beta or gamma and hence we can write sigma of reaction is equal to sigma C alpha plus into gamma beta over gamma. Now what with gamma beta or gamma can be written in some other form, we can have some other easier form than gamma beta or gamma. There is in the book of Brent and Weisskopf, compound nuclei, that is the theory of nuclei, in the maybe appendix, in the end of the book, appendix, there is one known as Reciprocity theorem. Well, you can check this reciprocity theorem. Vlad and Weisskopf. Vlad and Weisskopf book. They are available on the internet also. So reciprocity theorem says that K alpha square sigma plus this sigma are also written as uh, sigma are also written as sigma alpha beta means sigma for alpha channel incoming beta channel out there. Like this is also sigma r reaction alpha beta. So K square alpha into sigma alpha beta this is alpha channel incoming and beta channel outgoing reverse reaction also possible when particle is coming into beta, beta channel and emitted particle going into alpha channel so this reciprocal reaction that is equal to k square beta sigma beta alpha this is called reciprocity this is sigma for 
inverse channel, beta positive, beta coming, particle coming, beta channel, what was emitted earlier and emitted particle is now alpha. This is the initial channel, particle coming in the alpha channel and emitted particle going to beta. So this is no lambda reciprocity theorem. And this gives us the k square alpha, k square alpha, sigma alpha beta means sigma c alpha and gamma beta over gamma is equal to k square beta and this is sigma c beta and then what is here here gamma beta over gamma here it is gamma beta over gamma it will be gamma alpha over gamma so gamma alpha over gamma so this is gamma beta over gamma this is gamma alpha over gamma now what we get from reciprocity theorem discussed in the Platon Bioscope book well we cannot discuss all the things here We can see here k square alpha sigma c alpha divided by gamma alpha. This all three depend upon alpha alpha channel. On this side we have k square beta sigma c beta compound nucleus sorry compound nucleus second to beta channel divided by this becomes here gamma beta. So this thing depends only on alpha channel. This thing depends only on beta channel. This is independent of this channel, but this depends upon this. This is only possible when this thing or this thing are constant. Otherwise not possible. So this means it is only possible when this is a constant. And constant means I write this by symbol constant by u and this depends upon EC, compound nucleus energy. EC is same for the inverse channel or direction. So this is now k square. Now we can see this thing. Now what we can write? Well GC beta the decay probability of compound nucleus, which was gamma and beta over gamma. How I can write it? Gamma and beta over gamma. Gamma and beta, I write here. Gamma and beta into U PC is equal to this thing. So this thing is, how I can write this? This thing is equal to, and uh, yeah, so this will be how much? Gamma beta into you see is this thing. So what I will get? Gamma beta over gamma. K square beta and sigma c beta gamma beta over gamma. So gamma beta here, this comes here, over gamma means u e c into gamma. So this means this is k square beta and sigma c beta divided by u e c a constant into gamma beta over gamma. So gamma is summation over all the channels beta. So this gamma beta means gamma alpha, gamma beta, gamma delta and so on. All these are all the particles. So this into gamma means this into this is UAC into gamma beta means K square beta sigma beta. UAC into gamma alpha means this thing. Because UAC into gamma beta is this. So what we can write? GC beta is equal to this thing is k square beta sigma c beta divided by 
what I write? Gamma, all gamma is going to be gamma alpha plus gamma beta plus others gamma into mu. So this means that GC beta, the decay probability of compound nucleus is written as K square beta sigma C beta divided by U is e into gamma alpha. U is e to gamma alpha is this thing. U is e to gamma beta is this thing and so on. So the denominator becomes now what becomes? It is K square gamma and sigma C gamma and summation over gamma. So decay property G C beta is K square beta sigma C beta that is the formation of compound nucleus by beta. So then divide by the summation of this term. This is the formation of compound nucleus by alpha channel then beta channel gamma and so on. So it means sigma C alpha beta gamma should be known to us. So this is now the G C beta, the decay probability and in this way we can write the cross section sigma alpha beta is simply as sigma C alpha into K square beta sigma C beta divided by summation K square gamma sigma C. This becomes the expression for compound nucleus reaction cross section alpha beta reaction cross section using compound nucleus two postulates formation of compound nucleus and decay of compound so this gives us one formula one important thing okay uh, now i will stop here and tomorrow i will start from this point and then i will explain the Gauchat's experiment for compound nucleus theory uh, verification. I will go. So from this point, I will start. And today I stop here. So thank you very much for listening to me. Okay. Good night.